Hey everybody, Rudy here from Take a Bath Productions with another video to help you fix various things. Today I'm going to be working on this ICOM ICT70A. I'm going to show you how to take it apart and get inside and open up the transmit. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so as you can see, I've already removed the antenna and the, uh, the little rubber uh, gasket that goes on top of the antenna connector. Um, the biggest challenge on getting this thing apart is this um, uh, nut that's on top of the SMA connector. It is really tight from the factory, and you can try some long nose pliers, you know, but they it's it's too tight for that it'll just twist the pliers and it doesn't work so I had to make this tool right here I'm I just made it out of a piece of metal that I grinded right here that to fit over the connector like that and these are cut to fit in those two little slots right next to the connector okay so that'll kinda give you an idea how I got it to work I've looked for this tool online and I can't find anybody that sells one. There's some torque wrenches on there but uh, nothing I've found that's cheap and that works. Okay so just wanted to get that out of the way right off the bat. Now I've already pre-loosened this nut. Um, you might even, if you have something like this, you might even have to put a pair of vice grips on it to, uh, to get it to, uh, to where you can grip it. But uh, there we go, it works fine. Just get it loose and then you can take over with your fingers. There we go. Now these knobs, they just pull off. Okay, if you can't get it off like I just did, take a small screwdriver and very gently work it loose until you can get to it. But be careful not to make any mar, uh, mar marks on the, uh, on the knob or you won't be that happy when it's done. All right, so that's that. Uh, the battery pretty self-explanatory. It is a little bit hard to pull loose like that. So if you have a little plastic prying tool, you can pop it loose real easy without uh, marring it up with a screw screwdriver. Just pull these two little screws out right here. Put them in a cup or something so you can uh, not lose them. Okay, this next part can be a little bit of a challenge too. Uh, take a pretty small screwdriver and just slowly work it loose so that you don't wind up scratching it up real slow. I mean, you might get a couple of little scratches in it, but you know, it happens. Just slowly get it loose you gotta get it up so you can get something under it there we go there we go yep now the speaker connector probably you could leave it on there if you wanted to but for the purposes of the video I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off just like that all right we'll get that out of the way and I'm gonna get in a little bit closer uh, but before I do that, I wanted to show you the area that we're working in. We're working right here on the left side with these two little boogers here. 
257 and 258. I don't know which one is which, uh, but one is for VHF and one's for UHF to open up the, uh, the transmit. Now if this diode is here, you'll need to remove that too for uh, receive expansion, but this is already gone from the factory, so we're working with these two. So these little guys are pretty small, so they're kind of hard to get out. Yeah, it'd be nice to, uh, to use a hot air uh, workstation. Uh, I don't have one of those, and I imagine most of you guys don't either, so that's why I'm going to be using just an ordinary soldering iron. Uh, that way uh, I'm not showing you how to do something that you're going to need some big fancy tool for. Okay, as you can see, I've already pulled one of them out. I figured there was no sense in showing the same thing twice. Uh, so we're going to pull this guy out right here. Uh, usually what I like to do, and I've found that this kind of works the best, is to try to take an X-Acto knife and get it under there just a little bit, you know, to add a little pressure. And if my head goes off of the screen there, I'm sorry about that, but I have to see what I'm doing here so I don't ruin my HT. But just get, get a little pressure going on once uh, in the middle and just take the soldering iron and slowly heat that puppy up. There we go. And when you're done there, just kind of fix the solder back a little bit. Now, if you have a, uh, a loop magnifying glass, you're uh, good to look at those solder connections and make sure you haven't bridged across anything. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, nothing's bridged, but I'm going to go ahead and clean it up with a little bit of uh, alcohol, anything like that will work fine. Alright, that's it on uh, doing that, so we're going to go ahead and put it all back together and give it a test. Okay, I've checked all my uh, solder pads here and everything looks good, no, uh, no shorts. Uh, so go ahead and put it back together real quick and see what we got. Make sure you're not pinching any wires from the speaker. And just kind of slowly do everything in reverse. Be careful when you get to that point right there when you're trying to push this back in. I've done this a couple of times and it didn't want to go down, so if that happens, don't force it. Just pull it back out and start over. Okay, I got it in there that time. Helps to have a magnetic screwdriver bit. Now, the, my advice on this is, is if you want to torque this on there like the factory had it, then go for it. But uh, I'm not putting mine back on there that tight. I'm just going to put it on there snug, and that's all I'm going to do. There's no need to have it as tight as the factory had it. They probably do that to keep you from getting in there, to make you send it to them to do the mod. would be my guess is the only reason. All right, I'm going to go get my SMA adapter so I can uh, hook this into a dummy load because when we're testing it, we don't want to be transmitting on those frequencies. All right, welcome back. Um, got everything put back together, got the dummy load hooked up. Uh, as you can see, I'm starting out here on uh, 440. 
we're on the low uh, power and uh, we're on 479 and we transmit there so it's 479 to 400 alright so that's the transmit range there we're gonna go to the uh, 2 meter band and I believe I didn't check this before the video but I believe it's gonna be from 136 to 174 yep 136 transmits 174 transmitting there alright so we're all opened up uh, I'm not going to bother to hook up a watt meter to it. I already know that you're going to have a little bit of reduced power on the band edges. That's just the nature of these uh, mods. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click on the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Thanks for watching.